Whenever you're ready, James. My name is James. My name is James. And uh, I used to be a drug addict, alcoholic, homeless for 19 years. Me and my wife lived up under a bridge in Kansas City. And Doug Perry brought us from up under there. Took me to treatment. And I didn't think that I had a chance to get a job to live a normal life. And I did. And she did too. She went and I went. Her name is Kim Spear. And ever since I've been here, those parents never turned his back on me. Cindy and them never turned their back on me. They always welcomed me. They welcomed her. They welcomed my pet. Helped me get a job. Sent me to treatment. Took me to treatment. Came to visit me. Took me to the hospital. And everything else. And to this day, I praise God, and I'm very grateful that I do have a roof over my head, that I'm not out in the rain and the sleet and the snore, that me and her used to stand out there and hold signs on Broadway Bridge in the wintertime every day in the rain, the sleet, and the snow, and in the heat in the summertime to buy drugs and to buy alcohol. And we let that go. When we met Doug Perry and we came here to Liberty, now I got a beautiful job. I'm a certified trainer at my job. I'm certified with the Department of Mental Health that I thought I never could do. And I tell anybody, it's not easy out there sleeping in the street, eating out of dumpster, and in the cold when you don't have no heat for years. Some people, they take advantage of it because they didn't have to live the way me and her live. If they only knew what we went through. If they only imagined or just sat there and just see how we had to live with rats crawling all over us at nighttime in the cold. We had to build camps, boards around us to stay warm. It wasn't easy, and it was through the grace of God that we lived. And there's still some people out there to this day that still live like that. We didn't choose, to, we chose to live like that. Didn't nobody force us to live like that. But we chose to turn our life around. We chose to turn our life around. And it's, it was hard because we didn't want to. We didn't want nothing in life. We had gave up on life. We didn't care if we died or lived. Doug came and met me, and I chose to go back in the street. He said, no, you're not. And I didn't even know him at that time. And he came and picked me up from treatment and brought me here. He gave me a place to stay. And that's when I started changing my life. And he gave, and I talked to him. He prayed for me. And we sat down and we talked. And he gave me some hope. He gave me some hope to say, hey, you can live better than this here. I have medical problems from living out there. But I'm not going to give it up. I'm not going to give up. But I refuse to go back. I refuse to go back. 
My wife, she refused to go back. We live a terrible life because we chose to live like that. But I'm going to tell you, to this day, there is hope. God can help anybody when you surrender. I don't care what nobody say. He's a healer. He's a healer. Amen. When you surrender and just give up, whatever is bothering you, whatever is hindering you, when you surrender to God, and you had to cry out like I did, and like she did, and say, I need some help. Help me. He will. But you have to mean it from the heart. You just can't just say it out your mouth. He knows what's in your heart. And he's seen I was sincere. And I was serious. And he didn't turn his back on me. He didn't. And to this day, I'm grateful. And I got tears and I'm crying of joy. It's raining outside. And it's cold out there. I'm not smoking crack today. I'm not drinking alcohol today. I got a good job. And I praise God for that. I don't care what nobody say or what they think about James or Kim, whatever. Regardless, you put God first and you surrender. When you surrender and turn everything over and give your life over to him, and whatever is bothering you, you have to sit down if you have to cry out. They used to say men don't cry. I cry. I cry out and I scream out and I holler to God. I say, you created me. Help me. Give me some help. Please. And he comes. And I pray every day. And I thank God for another day of life. There's a lot of friends of mine. That's, I'm 56 years old. Going on 56. Some of them didn't even see 32. Some of them didn't see 40. Because the life they chose to live just like the life I chose to live. But that was prayer. That was prayer. And you have to ask God every day and thank him when you first open your eyes every day. And say thank you for another day. Please guide me through this day. Help me make a, a plan. Because a man that planned to fail is a man that failed to plan. And that's the way it is. You have to be sincere. You can't play with God because he knows what's in your heart. You can't walk around with your nose in the air with pride. That blocks the sunlight of the spirit. And it does. You have to... Just give yourself away. And that's what I had to do. And I give myself away. And when I signed out and I said, hey, I'm done. I was done. And to this day, I don't belong to James anymore. I had to say, God, I belong to you. You created me. Jesus Christ died for me. And he didn't waste his blood on that cross for nothing. <clears throat> if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here today. And a lot of people, they take advantage of that. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we wouldn't be here. A lot of people just take for granted. Because they live today. You got two dates. You got a birth date and you got a death date. How you live your life between them two dates determine where you're going to spend eternity. You can spend it in hell or you can spend it in heaven. It all depends on you. That's all I got to say. Thanks, James. That's all I got to say.